Satnam, I'm Nirvar Singh Khalsa, and here we are in the month of November, and we have a wonderful Kriya to practice today. This Kriya uh, comes from one of my favorite KRI publications called Prana Prani Pranayam, and it's called uh, Initiation into Intuition. And that is, I remember this Kriya from a long time ago. Uh, it's a uh, because Yogi Bhajan, in the very early days, talked about meditating on the blue pearl. And so, this is what this is about, is meditating on the blue pearl. This invitation to initiation into intuition. Because your intuition is so important. If you take a look in the Yogi Bhajan Library of Teachings and just search on the word intuition, it's amazing how much that Yogi Bhajan talked about it in all the various times that he was teaching. But essentially what it is, and he was very specific in this lecture when he was talking about it, and that is that he was saying when you wake up, and I think he was saying this in figuratively as, as well as literally, when you wake up, you will begin to have the answers to those things that have been really bothering you or you've been trying to work out. And so it's partly the fact that we have so much ability to understand on all kinds of levels every situation that we're in, but we're so used to habit and the way the mind is working to actually really process just on more superficial levels, you know, and then we get distracted. And so you start to use your intuition, you start to use more of your brain. In addition, what he said about this is that uh, you will be able to control your reactions of anger. Now, to me, that, that's worth it just to actually practice this, this Kriya, because it's those times when you get upset, when you actually, really everything becomes lost. You lose actually your ability to understand, to get perspective about any point of view. When you're lost into that, that, that fiery emotion of anger. And if you can control your anger, then you can actually give yourself perspective. That's why we always, when we meditate, we like to get into that state of, of that very neutral state, that shunya state, so that we can have perspective. So between the, your perspective and intuition, you're, you're much better able to operate in the world in a very effective way. Now, this might be <laughs> the most difficult Kriya that I've ever taught in this whole series. And it's not because we're going to be doing something exceptional. It's kind of like white tantric yoga, you know, these arms up things. Oh no, you know, place my finger on my partner's forehead. If you've done white tantric yoga, you know how challenging they can be. Sometimes the most challenging things are when you're just sitting there. And this is exactly what this is. You're basically just going to sit with a couple of elements. I would say, there are four very critical elements in this Kriya. There's not going to be a mantra. There's not going to be breath. You're just going to hold yourself in a position and allow the transformation to actually happen in your brain. We're going to create some new neural pathways. In a certain sense, I think that's why Yogi Bhajan called this initiation. It gets those neural pathways going so that you're using more of your frontal brain and your intuitive process is uh, going to really kind of kick in. Now, if you're already an intuitive person, this will make you more intuitive. <laughs> okay, now, these four elements. Well, first of all, of course, we're going to do the tune-in mantra. Om Namo Gurudev Namo. Three times on a breath. And then there's a mudra. And you're going to have three fingers together, and you're really going to lock down. A lot of times we have these, these passive type mudras, and then we have an active mudra where you're really locking down this mercury finger, right? So that's the way the hands are going to be. So that's an important element. The next important element is a tongue position. There's a few kriyas where Yogi Bhajan specifically talk, taught tongue positions. 
This tongue position is where you, you take your tongue and you pull it all the way back as though you're trying to kind of swallow your tongue. So you're really feeling a stretch. Yogi Bhajan called it the central nerve of the tongue. A stretch underneath the tongue. You know that little thing that holds your tongue in place? That should feel stretched to the point of being slightly uncomfortable and maintain that. Your molars are going to be locked together as you bring your tongue back. And then you're going to be gazing at the tip of the nose, keeping both sides of the nose in equal view. And it's going to be a very strong concentration at, at the tip of your nose so that you feel, the, so you see the blue pearl or the black pearl, whatever you want to call it. Originally, you know, back in the 70s when Yogi Bhajan was talking about this, I was saying, gosh, I don't see like a pearl floating out in front of me. What it is actually, it's like um, a, a slight shading over the tip of your nose. It's a little shading. It can be blue or it can be black. But what you're doing is you're seeing like kind of an upper hemisphere of, of the entire pearl. From the mystical sense, the whole sphere of the pearl is there, but you're just seeing like an aura or a slight shadow over the tip of your nose. That's the blue pearl, the black pearl. And then the fourth element, you're going to be in neck lock. So you really want to keep this mudra steady. You want to keep the tongue pulled back very strongly. And you want to have the gaze at the tip of the nose so that you see that shadow. And, and believe me, that shadow is not going to be there constantly and consistently. It's going to come and go. But to remember to do the tongue, to remember to keep the strong concentration at the tip of the nose, to remember to keep the mudra, and to remember to keep yourself in neck lock, that's kind of enough because you're going to find that as your mind wanders, you're going to like loosen yourself from these positions. Not that I want you to be like totally rigid the whole time and holding yourself out of fear. You do have to process the mind as you're holding the position, but you want to kind of remind yourself as you're doing the Kriya itself to actually hold those elements really steady. That's what, what Yogi Bhajan said about it, he says, even if you can <laughs> manage to be there for three minutes of this, you'll have won the game. But we're going to do it for 11 minutes for uh, this month of November together. So if you find yourself sitting down and your mind is a little bit scattered, you're really not there, what I would recommend is that you might do a pranayama before you would start. You can do an alternate nostril breathing. You could do some breath of fire because the meditation just with those elements that I talk about is actually pretty challenging just to really hold it. So this is what it's going to look like. And then when you're done, you're going to take three deep breaths, right? He, he used that a lot at the end of Kriyas and Meditations. But in this one, he was really specific. You're going to hold the breath and you're going to tighten everything in the body three times. He actually had a, a word for this. He called this Kampana. You're going to hold yourself so tight that you almost quiver and shake a little bit. You're going to really keep the the gaze at the tip of the nose, you'll really pull the tongue way back. You're going to hold the mudra steady and you're going to just tighten everything as you suspend the breath in three times. He didn't give a really specific amount of time to do it. You know, 10, 15 seconds would be enough for each one of those three breaths. But he said it was very important for that distribution of what you've been doing with the central nerve, the shashumna, the central nerve, the nerve of the tongue, to really work on the brain and opening up those neural pathways to distribute throughout your entire body. And so, 11 minutes, we're going to do it together. We're going to initiate ourselves into intuition. 
And intuition is the most important thing that you can have. You'll find the answers to all these things that are happening with you. You'll be able to actually understand the consequences of sequences that you create. It's a way of making your life a little bit smoother, a little bit happier, a little bit healthier. So we'll do this together this month. Satnam.